Bum 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 bum. Tomatoes. Hello, and welcome to the video for what is the widget interaction component. The widget interaction component. We can see that here. It's a component we can add to one of our blueprints. It allows us to interact with widgets that are in our world that are using the widget component. So let's take a look at an example. We'll hit play. I have my character. When I look at this button, it says push me. And when I click my right mouse button, it says I pushed it. You can see it simulating a push. If I go back far enough, you can see it's not interacting until I get close enough. So let's take a look at it. If we look at our widget itself, so let me find this widget in our world. It's using a widget component and it has some options. Inside of our widget component, we have receive hardware input. And this allows us to basically simulate input from our mouse and our keyboard to the widget. But it's meant for more like when our mouse mouses over something. That's great if we can use our mouse, but let's say we're not. Like in our example, we have our first person character here. And our first person character doesn't have a mouse. We aim at something, we look at something so we can interact with it. But we need our widgets in our world to know we're looking at them and want to interact with them. That's where the component comes in. So you add the widget interaction component to your blueprint and think of it kind of like a laser pointer. And I can actually show you that. We're going to hit show debug here on the option for it. Hit play and you'll notice we have a little red dot. That is our laser pointer. That is where our widget interaction component is shooting off a line trace towards any widgets it can interact with and then interacting accordingly. Now the default interaction for the most part is going to be hover. It's like our mouse was moving around the screen. That's where our button is showing the hover display. In our widget interaction component, we have a couple options. We have our virtual user index and our pointer index. So if we're simulating different controllers, we might want to use different users. And if we're simulating different pointers, maybe hand or something like that, virtual fingertips, each of these interaction components can have their own settings. So that way we can grab that information back and do something appropriately. By default, if you're just going to try to simulate a single interaction, the default settings are fine. You have your trace center, trace channel. By default, it's visibility. It makes sense. If we can see it, we want to react appropriately. The distance for interaction is how far away in units from this item to what we're interacting with in order to fake interaction. In this case, you can see we're close enough. If I back far enough away, we're no longer within 500. Of course, if you adjust that, say 1,000, you'll see we can be even farther away and we'll be interacting. And of course, we'll fall off because we're too far away. I'll set it back to 500. This interaction source, we have four options. This determines where the source or the beginning point of our line trace or our laser pointer is going to start from. And then it's going to travel forward our distance. By default, it's going to be world space. And what that means is wherever this interaction component is in the world, it's going to trace in the forward direction on it the distance and see what it interacts with or hits. In our case, I have the widget interaction component on our first person camera. So it's simulating like we're looking forward. But if you want something different, you have the mouse. Now our mouse option means our mouse is going to be our source and that's going to shoot forward X amount of degrees, degrees, units, distance. So I'm going to switch this over to mouse and game. We're going to hit play. And now you can see it's not interacting anymore with my character, but my mouse is shooting forward from that position and working appropriately like we expect it. And if we go back farther, you'll see it's not working because from where my character is, and this mouse position on the screen, forward 500 units, it's not within the right distance until we get close enough. And then of course we can interact it like we expect. The next one, if we go back to our interaction one, is gonna be center screen. This one's kind of pointless for what we're using now, but it's the center of the screen. Maybe your interaction component isn't gonna work or you don't really care because in our case, our center of our screen is what we care about because we're setting up our component in the center of the screen, this just makes it simpler. The world one's nice. Maybe you have the interaction component, the front of the player, the tip of the gun. Maybe it's the front of a vehicle. It's some other place other than where the camera is that you want to shoot forward. 
That's where world comes in. Center screen is just a quick shortcut to the center of your screen. Custom is an interaction source that you provide the location whenever it needs to do the interaction, and then it will go ahead and fire it off. And I can show you how to set that up in a little bit. Last option is enable hit testing. It's really simple. Hit testing basically turns on our line trace. Let me set this back to world. And we'll run it, and you'll notice, well, it's not working anymore. If I turn hit testing back on and run it, it should work like we expect. Enable hit testing turns on the hit testing. Whether or not our line trace is going to hit our target, if it's off, it's not going to work. But that's still useful if you want to interact with stuff, but you don't really want to emulate the hit testing or the trace. Maybe you just want to send information to something else, like a virtual keyboard or virtual input. Show debug turns on and off our debug line, and the debug color is the debug color. We'll go ahead and disable that for now. Now you might be wondering, first of all, let me change this back to game. There we go and save that. You might be wondering, how does this actually work and interact? If we close this, and we look at our interaction component, and we scroll down, we only really have four things, four events. On hovered widget changed is unique to this, and the others are all part of components. On hovered widget change is called when the hovered widget component changes. You really don't need to overact this. This is kind of at the higher end level. What we want is the ability for our widget interaction component to call events on whatever it's targeting. And we do that, as you can see here, by using the events off of our widget interaction component. So we have a widget interaction component. We could, of course, drag it in. So we have it here. And if we pull it off and we look for interaction, we can see the events for our widget interaction component. And you can see target is widget interaction component, target is widget interaction component, etc. Our primary ones are going to be our presses. So in this case, my character pushes the right mouse button. When the right mouse button is pushed, I say, hey, interaction component, whatever you're interacting with, simulate the left mouse button being pushed. And when you release it, simulate the left mouse button being released. That's the basics. If, if all you want to do is simulate your character being able to use the mouse, but not with the mouse on the screen, this is your setup right here. If you want to do things more fancily, you do have your other options. When we looked under interaction, let's pull up our palette, make this easier. So we don't have to keep doing that. We'll find library, and then we'll find our interaction, and then we have our interaction events here. So you can do things like pressing a pointer key, which we can see here, and you can have different keys in there. Pressing a key, so you can pass keyboard keys in. Let's say you're simulating a keyboard or a number pad to unlock something. You can have 10 digits sitting on the screen. They can simulate them, and it'll pass numbers in maybe to an input pad or to an input or a text string or something. Pressing and releasing, you can simulate the scroll wheel. You can send key characters themselves. Set custom hit result. This is the one I alluded to earlier. This is where you can send in a custom hit result structure to simulate where you want that hit result to be simulated from and how you want it to be done if you're using a custom hit result. Then you can also check and see what you're over. Get your last results. Are you over something? Are you over focusable? Get your hit location in 2D. Get the hovered widget component. Are you over an interactable? So it's got a bunch of different items you can interact with based on this. But the simplest thing to know is you're just faking input to a widget through the widget interaction component, whatever it's got in focus, whatever it's aimed at. That's the goal of the widget interaction component, to give you input when you don't really have normal input like a mouse. And that's it. That is what our widget interaction component is for.